Scientists are keenly aware that prostate cancer is highly sensitive to changes in the body's hormone levels. The prevailing belief among the medical establishment has been that elevating a man's testosterone levels can increase his risk for prostate cancer. However, new research and evidence-based theories are beginning to emerge that suggest the nature of the cancer hormone relationship is not that simple. The origins of the medical community's highly cautious stance on utilizing testosterone therapy as a treatment for prostate cancer can be traced back to 1941. At the time, Charles B. Huggins, a urologist at the University of Chicago, began experimenting on the effects of testicle and prostate removal in dogs. He and his colleagues concluded that reduction of testosterone levels would lead to a shrinking of prostate cancer, while increasing testosterone levels would cause increased prostate cancer growth. Now emerging research is beginning to call these long-standing conclusions regarding prostate cancer and testosterone levels into question. One such study, conducted by Abraham Morgenthaler of Men's Health Boston, suggests that testosterone treatment in men does not lead to rapid prostate cancer growth. Morgenthaler's study followed 13 men for a median of 2.5 years while they were undergoing active prostate cancer surveillance while simultaneously receiving testosterone therapy. Follow-up biopsies were performed at yearly intervals and showed none of the patient's cancer had progressed. Surprisingly, 54% of the biopsies revealed no cancer at all. The cells of a prostate cancer are what we call heterogeneous. That means they don't look alike from each other. They don't carry the same type of receptor. So one group over here may have a lot of testosterone receptors. This group over here may have a lot of estrogen receptors. This group over here may have a lot of testosterone receptors on the DNA, on the nucleus. So the, there is advantage to using testosterone that may kill off one section of those type of cells and help proliferate other sections, but then when you change the routine, so now you're decreasing the testosterone, then you kill off the other section while the other section starts to grow. So what you're doing is you're never truly eliminating the cancer, but you're killing off the, the prevalent group. And as it kills off enough and the other one had been growing, then you switch the, switch the therapy. That's where Ed's paper is very interesting in the what we call cyclic rotation of hormonal treatment. So that's why I believe that frequently when you see taking the testosterone away from guys who have prostate cancer, you see a drop in the prostate cancer. But within a couple of years, you start seeing this elevation of the worst type of prostate cancer, the cancer cells that we call testosterone-resistant or not dependent on the testosterone.